backing up most of my critical data, I use the Synology Disk Station DS1515, which I unboxed on the channel midway through last year. Supporting five drives out of the box and an Annapurna Labs quad-core processor, the DS1515 offers plenty of storage options and enough horsepower to handle my needs. Essentially, I use the DS1515 as a basic network attached storage device, as this is all I require for backup purposes. Despite the fact that it meets my demands perfectly, it also seems like the DS1515's many talents are actually being wasted. Through the use of the Disk Station Manager software, it's possible for Synology's storage devices to do so much more than just store data, and today with the help of the new DS716 Plus, we're going to explore a good number of these features. Before I fire up the latest DSM software, let's just quickly go over the device itself. Compared to the DS1515, the smaller 2-bay model is a bit cheaper at $450, though I will admit this still seems like a lot. That said, inside you'll find an Intel Sauron N3150 quad-core clocked at 1.6GHz with a burst speed of 2GHz. This powerful system on chip is supported by 2GB of DDR3 memory, which does seem a bit limited, especially given how cheap a DDR3L 4GB module is these days. Some cool features include the ability to support the DX513 expansion unit, which takes the drive capacity to 7. Though it is worth mentioning that the expansion unit costs more than the DS716 Plus itself at $500, so yeah, maybe not. It's well worth pointing out that along with the aging EXT4 file system, the DS716 Plus also features support for the more modern and reliable BTRFS, otherwise known as ButterFS or BetterFS. The unit itself is quite smart looking and comes in an all black design. From the front there are two hot swappable drive bays with custom locks and then down the right side we have a number of activity lights that show the unit's status and network activity. There's also a copy button with a green LED which is used to quickly access storage connected to the front USB 3 port. Finally, you'll find a small square power button which features a nice blue LED. I should point out that the brightness of the LED lights on the DS716 Plus can be adjusted in the DSM software, so if you find them too illuminating you can turn them down a notch. Around the back, the DS716 Plus is cooled using a single 92mm fan which I found very quiet during operation, certainly much quieter than my Western Digital RED Pro 4TB hard drives. Also on the back side of the unit, we find dual gigabit ethernet ports, two USB 3 ports, an eSATA port for the optional DX513 expansion unit, a factory reset button, a 4 pin DC power plug and a Kensington lock. Now with the basics out of the way, let's take an in-depth look at the DSM6 software from a home user's perspective perspective and see why the DS716 Plus is much more than just a NAS. Also, please note I won't be focusing on performance for this video. Starting with the basics, we have the File Station program which is essentially a Windows Explorer type feature of the DSM's browser based user interface. File Station allows users to organise and share any and all of their data stored on the NAS. Conveniently, it's possible to move and upload files simply by dragging and dropping. Of course, you can still access shared folders using Windows Explorer by browsing the Synology NAS on the network, and this works for Mac users as well if you're swimming that way. The file station is a great way to set permissions to determine which folders and files users can access. Another cool feature, which can be used by simply right-clicking a file or folder and selecting share file links, allows you to generate a link and QR code, which can be sent to friends or other users. They can then follow the link to download the selected file or folder whether or not they possess a DSM account. Next, we have the Photo Station app, which serves as a centralised photo organiser for your home network. This is a particularly useful feature for keen photographers, but will also be enjoyed by a range of shooters as well for storing and showing off family photos, for example. The Photo Station is a powerful app that allows users to create albums that can be viewed remotely and even create blogs to record and share exciting photos. Providing you have enough bandwidth, Photo Station can eliminate the need for third-party services such as Flickr. It's even possible to upload and download photos from other devices to the Photo Station using Synology's nifty little DS Photo app, which features support for both Android and iOS. Complementing the Photo Station is Synology's Audio Station, which, as the name suggests, is designed to organise your music collection, allowing you to create your own playlists and assign ratings. Support for internet radio as well as AirPlay and Bluetooth devices also exists. There's also a DS Audio app which allows users to stream music stored on the NAS to smart devices using Android or iOS. Additionally, you can download music from the NAS to your devices for offline playback. Video Station has seen a massive overhaul in the latest DSM version and now looks prettier than ever. This powerful app allows users to store and organise all their movies, TV shows, home videos, TV recordings in one place. 
And not just that, but they can of course stream them to a multitude of devices, including the humble PC, smartphones, tablets, or TVs. It can also retrieve video metadata from the internet automatically, saving you the time to add movie posters and descriptions yourself. Very cool indeed. Users can stream videos to Apple TV, Chromecast, DLNA devices, Samsung Smart TV, Xbox, PlayStation, and more using Video Station, DS Video, or Media Server. Even if your device or media player can't play certain file formats, there's a good chance the video station can transcode it on the fly to a watchable format as you stream it. Offline transcoding is now supported as well, and this is a very cool feature. Previously, it wasn't possible to use the transcoding feature offline, as this was a real-time feature only. However, Synology has now added offline transcoding, a feature that allows you to pre-transcode a video and then download it to mobile devices via the DS Video mobile app. Pretty amazing. An app that I do use on my DS1515 quite regularly is Download Station. This handy app allows users to download files from the internet through BitTorrent, FTP, HTTP, NZB, Thunder, FlashGet, QQDL, and Emule, as well as search for torrents directly via the Synology search engine. This means users can now turn off their PC to save power and let the much more fuel efficient NAS handle the downloads and uploads 24-7. There's even a preview feature which allows users to take a quick sneak peek at the files they're downloading before it completes, allowing them to stop downloading any files that look a bit dubious. Of course, like all the other Synology apps, the download station is smart device friendly thanks to the DS Download app. This mobile app allows users to remotely start or manage tasks search for a torrent and even start downloading before you get home. Just remember, don't drive and torrent at the same time. If you need to take a note or notes, never fear, NoteStation is here. This isn't a particularly useful app for home users, but I can see how small businesses would find it useful. One might assume that note taking is a pretty simple task, and even Synology couldn't create what could be described as a powerful note-taking app. Nevertheless, it's possible they've done just that with NoteStation. This app allows users to create, manage, and share content-rich notes using an intuitive interface and surprisingly rich editing tools. Synology says centralizing all your diaries, class notes, clippings, travel itineraries, and so on makes it easier to find what you need thanks to a simple search feature, even something that's in an attachment. They also point out that keeping notes on a private cloud gives you maximum data security, so no more funny stickman post-it notes then, I guess. Anyway, enough about notes. Let's look at something even more nerdy yet, spreadsheets. As fun as spreadsheet station sounds, Synology disappointingly went with just spreadsheets as the app name. I know. Aside from the obvious, spreadsheets allows users to work on data sets together, much like Google Docs, but users can enjoy the benefit of collaboration without worrying about putting their data in public clouds. Speaking of cloud services such as Google Drive, Synology allows users to create their very own cloud service with none other than, yep, you guessed it, CloudStation. This app allows users to create their own Dropbox and retain total control. As soon as you save a change, it automatically updates the copies on your other devices, computers, smartphones, tablets, etc. This allows you to close the document on the office computer and immediately pick up where you left off on your laptop during a business trip or commute home. The Synology Disk Station DS716 Plus is an awesome network attached storage device and with its vast functionality, it should really be considered a server rather than a NAS. Synology's DSM software is able to take care of pretty much anything, making it an incredibly powerful device. I could go on and on about how great the DS716 Plus is as a file server slash home server, but rather than drag out what is probably already a long video by this point, let's just get to it. The only possible issues I could think of is the limited memory capacity, along with the lack of display options. Competing models from QNAP have been carrying HDMI outputs for some time now, making them direct replacements for the popular home theater PC. Thankfully, it is possible to upgrade the memory, and many users have reported successfully upgrading the DS716 Plus to an 8GB capacity. It would be nice if Synology again looked at their competitor QNAP and offered various memory options. The QNAP TS251 Plus, for example, can be purchased with either 2GB or 8GB of memory and it also comes with a remote control and HDMI output for $340 or $450 for the 8GB model. Meanwhile, the DS716 Plus starts at $450, and although it only comes with 2GB of memory, its superior processor and arguably better software still make it a very competitive option at this price. Additionally, it can also be expanded using the DX513 to support another 5 hard drives which could be a handy feature down the track. Overall, I've really enjoyed using the Disk Station DS716 Plus and have no trouble recommending it at all. Be sure to let me know what you think about the DS716 Plus. Would you miss features such as HDMI out and easily upgradable memory? 
Let us know on our forum at hardwareunboxed.com or in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.